So the power board looks like this, and we're going to need to populate all these components. So we're going to start with the easiest, which is the voltage regulator. So we're going to take this voltage regulator, place it into these holes here, and then bend it back slightly. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and mount the two push buttons. So they mount like so. One push button goes here, and the other one goes right beside it. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and solder these into place. And now we're going to go ahead and mount the LED again. There's a long lead, short lead. Short lead, on, in this case, goes on the right. And we're going to go ahead and mount the two 1K resistors. So this time bend it into a V shape like this. And then place them here. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and solder these resistors and this LED into place. And then trim the leads. Alright, and now we're going to go ahead and mount the two capacitors. So we're going to start with the 0.1 microfarad capacitor, and we're going to mount it here. So just bend the leads out of the way. And then we're going to take the 10 microfarad capacitor, and again, long lead, short lead. Uh, the shorter lead is going to be at the top. You can also see a little uh, negative mark here on the board, right there. And there's a positive mark, so you want to line it up like this. And press that into place, and bend the leads out of the way. Okay, and we're going to solder these into place. Alright, and only two more components to go. So we're going to start with the 4-pin female header that looks like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to bend the pins at a right angle like that. And then you're going to place it at the bottom of the board like this. So just like that. And then bend the, bend the pins up like so. And then solder them into place. And the last thing to solder is the 3.3 uh, volt logic converter. So I'm holding it upside down. There we go. So what you want to do is take these headers, these four pin headers, and we're going to go place them in these spots here. And then over the top of that, we're going to go ahead and place the 3.3 volt logic converter. And you might need to bend some uh, components out of the way to make it fit. Alright, so that's that, and we're going to go ahead and solder the top of this logic converter, so we're going to solder these pins here, and now we're going to trim off these leads here. But remember, you can remove this thing, uh, so just try to keep that in place. And with that done, we're going to go ahead and flip this board over. And you might want to secure this with something because if you don't, it'll kind of fall out. So just place your board here, and I don't know, if you have a uh, third hand tool, you could uh, hold that in place like that, or if you want, you could uh, tape this down. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then go ahead and solder these, these four pins here and these four pins here. And with that, the power supply is pretty much done. So again, we're going to go ahead and tin these pads here and here. So to do that, grab your soldering iron, grab your solder. Heat up the pad with the soldering iron and then touch some solder to it. And then also do these on the side here too. 
So now that the power supply is done, we're going to go ahead and connect it to the battery pack. So if you look at your 4AA battery pack, you should see a red wire and a black wire coming off of it. The black wire is negative, the red wire is positive. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to try to mount the board like this. Um, so try to aim for the bottom uh, left corner here. So we're going to solder the wires pretty much like that. So I'm going to go ahead and trim these wires. And then we're going to go ahead and strip these. And then what you want to do is connect the red wire to the V plus and the black wire to the G and D. So to do that, take your red wire, line it up with the spot where it needs to be mounted, and then just touch that with your soldering iron. And it should be connected like that. Then do the same thing with the black wire, the ground. So just touch it here, and then that's soldered. So your power supply is done. So now that the power supply, the whole power assembly has been completed, it's a good idea to test it and make sure that it works. So grab four AA's here and install it into the battery pack. And look at your board here and then flip the switch and this LED should light up, letting you know that at least you have power flowing everywhere and that you don't have a short. And then we're going to go ahead and mount the... Now we're going to go ahead and mount the, we're going to place the uh, Bluetooth module. So it goes right here. So you have your 5 pin header here and the Bluetooth module just slides right in. And then it should start blinking. So you can be pretty sure that the power board is good to go and that you've probably soldered everything correctly. Or at least that you don't have any shorts here. Now we're going to mount this board to this battery pack with some hot glue to make sure that it doesn't fall off, the wires don't break off or anything like that. So heat up your hot glue gun and then we're going to go ahead and glue it to the battery pack. So we're going to take your hot glue gun once it's hot enough and you're just going to apply a bunch of hot glue on the bottom of this board here and then add some to the voltage regulator and why don't you add some to the Bluetooth module too. And then flip it over and press it down and mount it like that. And then we're going to go ahead and reinforce the power connections here. So just add some hot glue here too. Alright, so let this cool for now. So set this aside. And then go ahead and grab your 50 conductor cable. And then you're going to take off a section of 8 wires. And then rip off around somewhere around like a four foot section so there's that cable and we're going to go ahead and strip off the ends here so the ends are stripped here and then we're going to go ahead and split this cable up into individual sections so just split it or uh, somewhere around like an inch in length on both sides all right so the wires have been split on both ends about an inch down. So what you're going to want to do is uh, pick one side, left or right, doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead with the left. So take two wires and then uh, take two wires that are right next to each other. So this one and this one. And we're going to go ahead and twist them together. So like that. And then take another two section of wires. So I'm going to choose this one. And twist that together too then leave these wires as is and then trace these uh, two wires that you group together all the way down to the other end. So on the other end I have these two pairs of wires that I'm going to twist together and then these two pairs of wires. And then we're going to go ahead and tin these wires on both ends here. So just like with the matrices all you need to do is take your soldering iron and take your solder, heat up the wire with your soldering iron, and then apply some solder. Get something like this. So there's one end tinned, so you should have something that looks like this.
and then do the same thing with the other end. And then we're going to do one thing before we continue. Well, this is an optional step, but if you have a multimeter, I recommend you do this. So take your multimeter and put it on the continuity or ohm setting. So on my meter, it's this. And then I'm going to turn my beeper on. So what this tells you is if two wires are connected. So if I connect these leads together, you get a nice beep letting you know that they are connected. So what we're going to do is we're going to verify that these two wires are the same wire and these uh, two bunches are also the same. So what we're going to go ahead and do is touch one end to one wire and then one end to the other and it should beep. And then we're going to go ahead and test the other one. And it also beeps. So we can be uh, sure that these two wires are the same wire and these two wires are the same wire. If uh, you touched this wire, ah, you touch this wire and this wire and it didn't beep, then that would mean that you have the wrong wire and you should probably retrace your wires all the way down to make sure that you have the proper uh, wire. Uh, because if you don't, then you have a chance of uh, ruining your your uh, control module. So yeah, and while we have the meter here, we're going to go ahead and test the power supply here. So what you want to do is switch your multimeter from ohms, or the continuity mode, to uh, DC volts, which is here on my meter. So what you're going to do is you're going to switch on the whole module, you should see the light, take your red lead, place it on the VCC, which is this pad here, and then your black lead on the GND, and you should get somewhere around 5 volts. So you know that uh, this power module is providing the right power to go to the matrix drivers and the control board. Um, if you have crappier batteries, you might see something like four volts, three and a half, four and a half, something less than five if you have older batteries. And then another thing you might want to test is grab your, take your ground, take your black lead, stick it on the ground, and then stick the other lead on the SW here. And you should see zero volts on the multimeter. And then when you press the change mode button, which is this one, you should see five volts. So you know you've soldered that part properly. And then we're gonna go ahead and test the RX and the TX pads here, which is the RX here and the TX here. So keep your lead on ground here, connect it to ground, and then take your probe and put it on RX. You should see 5 volts, and then put it on TX. You should also see 5 volts. So yeah, um, this step is optional, but I would recommend you do it if you have a multimeter. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and solder our wire to this whole assembly here. So I'm just going to trim my wires a bit. So the two wires you twisted together should be connected to the GND here and the VCC here. So the two twisted wires go to the GND and the VCC. You twisted them together to uh, allow this cable to carry a little bit more power and They'll deliver a little bit more power to the matrix drivers and the control board. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this wire here to the GND, and the next one over to the VCC here. So we have the two twisted wires connected to the VCC and the GND, and then we're gonna go ahead and just connect these four wires to the SW, the RX, the TX, and the reset. This set of wires is connected, and now we're going to go ahead and connect the wire, the end of this wire, to this control board. So if you look at the pads here, you can also see that we have a GND, a VCC, an SW, a TX, an RX, and a reset here. So you want to connect these directly to the pads here, which are also GND, VCC, SW, RX, TX, and reset. So go ahead and connect these wires to the end of these wires, which is here, to the pads here. Make sure you mind which pad you connect to which one, or else this whole thing won't work. Okay, so all these wires are connected, and we're going to go ahead and try turning this on. 
Okay, so um, I will post a diagram showing what wire, what pads to connect to which pads here. It should be pretty self-explanatory, but I'll post a diagram just in case. So when you switch on the power supply, this LED should turn on and turn off, letting you know that you've soldered this chip correctly and that the crystals and the capacitors here are soldered properly. So see that again. I'm switch the board on, it turns on and off. And also if you press the reset button, uh, this LED blinks two or three times and then it turns on for a bit and turns off for a bit. So, so you know that these two uh, boards are properly connected together. So now we're going to go ahead and connect this to the matrix driver boards. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off just to make sure I don't short anything out.